Hello, hi, how are you? I hope you're good. Uh, it's April. How did we get here? I don't know. But anyway, in March I somehow was able to read 11 things in March. It's a lot for me at least. Let's get started. The first book that I read in March was Pirate's Boy by E.B. Collin. This is a middle grade book about this kid named Silas and he ends up on a pirate crew. It's a fun adventure story. I had such a, a good time reading this book. If you know any younger kid that is starting to get into reading and likes the sort of action adventure genre side of things, I would definitely recommend this one because it talks about pirates in such a fun lighthearted way and I think that's both a pro and a con because it's great that it's fun and that it doesn't view pirates in sort of a, a dark light but it doesn't really showcase the way pirates actually are so it is a pro and a con in that way but it was so fun and I love the characters. The captain of the story was so interesting and he was such a almost like a father figure to our main character in a way. I would recommend it and uh, I got it from the library. Haven't been able to return my library books recently but that's fine. After that I read Wilder Girls by Rory Power. This is one that I was kind of nervous to read just because I was so intrigued by it because I heard it was kind of compared to Lord of the Flies which all I really knew about was that they had to do something with survival and people stuck on an island, I think. So I was really interested because of that, but at the same time, I feel like when books are hyped up, sometimes they just kind of let you down. This one was such a surprise because, I mean, in a way, this book has one of those ambiguous endings, so it's not going to be satisfying for everyone. But for me, I really, really enjoyed it a lot. For those that don't know, this is about a group of girls that are at a boarding school and this disease kind of affects them. So they're all put on this quarantine. Probably wasn't the best thing to read at this time, but they're all locked and stuck at this island. They all have these different symptoms and we follow them and it's their survival story basically. And they're trying to just figure out what's going on because there's a lot of things that are being kept from them. It was really, really good. It's one of those edge of your seat, you need to know what happens. It's a page turner. So um, if that sounds interesting to you, I would highly recommend it, but just, just know that, you know, it doesn't have the most satisfying ending, but who cares, who cares? And then, oh gosh, I read House of Earth and Blood, a Crescent City novel by Sarah J Mass. This is the most recently published book by Sarah J Mass. This is the first book in a series probably. And I picked this book up the second it released because I just wanted to see what, what it was about. I just wanted something entertaining and Sarah J Mass is very entertaining. It is urban paranormal fantasy. We follow a lot of different unique creatures, characters, werewolves, a bunch of different stuff and it's this whole whirlwind of a story but it's just so good. Fair warning though, this, this book is very hard to get into. The first 100 to 200 pages are very just info dumpy and you know I could see a lot of people just DNFing it but if you could get through that then you're gonna see a lot of character development, interesting plot twists, action, adventure, romance, ridiculous dialogue that just makes you laugh and roll your eyes but it's it's also very heartwarming at the same time and I had such a fun time with this book and I, I would recommend it if you just want something entertaining. If you want something light fun. If you just want like a, a typical blockbuster, this is the book for you. This next one was unfortunately kind of disappointing for me. Minor Profits by Jimmy Koholius. I can't pronounce names. I picked this up from the library because I really really like this cover and I'd never heard of it before so it was just a random pick that I figured hey let's give it a try. It is a young adult kind of gothic mystery sort of story. We follow our main character. Oh what was his name? Lee. Lee. He has visions. He kind of sees the future. When his mom passes away, him and his younger sister run away to go live with their grandmother who they've never really seen before. She takes them in, they live with her. The grandmother sort of helps Lee with his visions and whatnot, but then creepy things start happening and there's actually like this big old cult involved. So I wasn't really expecting this book to go where it went. I actually like the story. I like the, the twist. I like the things that go on within this, but at the same time, it's just so unbelievable unbelievable and the character development of our main character was just so underdeveloped. He wasn't a very likable character. A lot of choices that our characters made just kind of made you 
infuriated and annoyed. There's just something off about this book. I have read other books before that deal with this sort of topic. It was just done better in other books unfortunately. So this one was kind of bland and a letdown but I do find the story to be intriguing enough so if someone just randomly picked it up you might enjoy it but at the same time it's kind of like a I'm gonna forget it and move on. So the cover for this next book is so pretty. I'm in love. I want to own my own copy. It's called The Light at the Bottom of the World by London Shaw. Did you see that? It's so pretty. This one was so much better than I was expecting. I hadn't heard a lot of things about this book but I have seen it around so when I saw it at the library I just needed to pick it up. This is a young adult story that is a post-apocalyptic book where everyone on earth has perished and died or at least most of everyone has died because the ocean there was some sort of earthquake or something that happened the ocean levels rose up so high that all of the land just became submerged and so London is now who knows how far below the ocean now we're just left with the survivors as they live underneath the ocean and they live in their submersibles and their dome buildings and they try to you know go along as well as they can and this book is so good because not only does it have a really great cast of characters and such a great moving plot but I love that this book talks about our impact on the environment and how not everything is as it seems and it's really really important to always question everything. If you get the chance if you see this book I highly recommend it. It's so good. Such a good book and I love that this book though it is telling a very sad story it, it's very hopeful at the same time. So I really recommend this one. The next book I read I don't have with me but it's called Where the World Ends by Geraldine Mc... Mc I can't say her name. I'm, I'm sorry. This book was really interesting because I didn't know that it was based on a true story until after I read it. It's about these this group of boys and these other men that get stuck on this island when they go on like kind of like a fishing trip but when they're there they think that the end of the world has happened and everyone has perished and they're the last ones that that are alive. I like how this book really showed how when people are put under pressure and when it comes to just the surviving people change and you see the hierarchy and you see people turn on one another and you see people take over and the way people fight and go at one another just to keep going is just crazy and then you see the bonds that other people make as well so it was an interesting book I did like it but it definitely is kind of forgettable uh, the character development isn't really there but I do love that this is a book that tells us about something that happened in history and I had never known about it before and now I do and so that's cool and then I read the Soul Keepers by Devin Taylor. This is basically Ghost Ship, a horror movie, but for kids, or maybe like a PG-13 version, you could say. This is about kids that ferry souls across the sea to, I guess, the afterlife. Certain people that pass away become different versions of death, and so we have the good guys that are death that ferry people to the afterlife. I saw a bee. Um, and then we have these other creatures that are these weird deformed skull creatures that, that eat people's souls, and then people just become Come nothing so it's kind of like the good versus bad death people and it's it's crazy it's all over the place I love this book because the fact that it's set on the ship and they're just sailing away and they're collecting people's souls it's non-stop action it's a page turner this is a book that I can see being made into a film it's one of those types of books so it's really good I like it a lot I highly recommend it I had such a fun time with this book I'm so happy I own a copy and it's also the first book in a series I think so the second book is out I really want to own it hopefully I can get it soon. And then I read right after that Sadie by Courtney Summers. I had really kind of low expectations because I saw all the hype for it but I did enjoy it a lot for the most part. Now this is about a girl whose sister is murdered and now our main character Sadie is trying to find the murderer and she wants to kill him. But what's interesting about this book is that her story is told in a podcast format. We follow a podcast and then we follow Sadie's point of view and the people that are creating the podcast are trying to find Sadie. This might not be for everyone just because of the setup and the way that the story is told. I feel maybe a lot of people might not feel as connected to Sadie as much as they would like to and I definitely understand that.
than that but overall I found this to be such an interesting take on um, a murder story and the way that they threw in the podcast and the setup was just great. Um, maybe you can check out the audiobook because I did start listening to the audiobook a little bit. Um, it wasn't necessarily for me but I know a lot of people do really like the audiobook because it brings the podcast to life and I think it has a full cast so maybe that's something you could check out. After that I read Dry by Neil Schusterman and I for the most part love Neil Schusterman so much. He wrote the Unwind series. Those books freaked me out especially the first one. Dry is about California in the future not too far in the future where and I live in California so I'm just gonna say it as me but in California here basically we run out of water. Imagine California runs out of water and and people just start dying of thirst. Basically just a survival story following these kids and this family. It was so good and yet it was so disappointing in the end for me and I'll tell you about that in a second but I, I love the fact that this book really talks about how people actually would react to the situation. There's a scene in this book where people just fight for water in the store and it reminds me of right now like with toilet paper. Obviously water is a bit more essential so it, it's it's a lot more scary in that sense. The way that people slowly just kind of deteriorate and the things that they will do in order to survive is just mind-blowing and crazy. I loved it because of that because it really showed. It just felt real in that way except the later half of this book the way it ended wrapped everything up in a pretty bow and no one died and everyone lived kind of happily ever after and for that I was going to give this book four stars but then it just ended so happily that I just gave it three stars unfortunately. It just didn't feel real enough in the end but I loved the beginning of this book. It made me so uncomfortable and I was getting thirsty and because I live here in California it just made me very on edge a little bit. Um, probably not the best thing to read right now but I did enjoy it but also I didn't enjoy it. And then I read Rebecca by Daphne du Maurier. I just posted a book review on this book and if you watch the review a link of down below you'll know that I love this so much. It's a new favorite of mine. It's so good. I'm not going to talk much about this book here but just know it was so good. It's so great. If you haven't read Rebecca you need to read Rebecca sometime in your life preferably now. Go, go buy the book now and just read it because it's just so the last thing I read uh, was last night. It was a novella and it's called Rolling in the Deep by Mira Grant and this is the prequel to Into the Drowning Deep by Mira Grant. It was so short but this is kind of in Into the Drowning Deep we follow a crew of people that go out into the sea trying to find mermaids and the prequel Rolling in the Deep that I just read talks about the original crew that went out there years and years ago and they all died and they perished and they were killed by killer mermaids and and we follow that story. We kind of see what happened to this crew originally and it was so sad. It was so sad. All I can really say is that it's sad and if you have read Into the Drowning Deep and want to know what happened to the original crew then read it. Listen to it. I listened to it on audiobook and it was really really good but very depressing and sad at the end because they all die. So uh, yeah, those are all the books that I read in March. I'm really happy with my reading. Hopefully I keep reading a lot. If you've read any of these books, let me know your thoughts and opinions in the comments below. I would love to talk with you and I will see you in another video very soon. Bye!